Recently on Instagram, I posted the photo of this block square that I've been working on, I've been scraping this in, and somebody asked me in the comments how I was gonna establish that we had two perpendicular faces, well, these two faces are perpendicular to the bottom face, without an existing square or an existing reference. So I typed out an explanation, recorded a short video. This is really a, a longer form version of that. So we're gonna establish first that one face is flat, then that two opposing faces are parallel, and then that those two faces are perpendicular to the bottom of the block, or the part, depending on what you're uh, making. Throughout the scraping process, I worked to the tolerances in table 11 of this document. This is British Standard 939-2007. And while we won't be examining this document in depth in this video, it is quite comprehensive in that it not only details the requirements that various types of squares have to meet, but also how to evaluate them for compliance. So it's well worth a couple of minutes on Google to track a copy of this down if you're interested in this sort of thing. And if you're watching this video, you probably are. So here's our block. And the first thing we want to do is to check that we have a side that is flat. Now before we do anything else, take your hands, move everything out of the way and ensure that your plate is clean. Any little bits of grit, dirt, dust will mess up your measurements. We're talking about the loosest tolerance for any of the three faces that I've scraped here is four microns. Three microns is the tolerance for squareness. That's 1.2 tenths. So you can imagine a stray hair, a little bit of grit, a little bit of sawdust, anything like that is going to throw your measurements off. So I can't label the point enough. Make sure that your plate is clean. Also, the parts you're working on, just wipe them off by hand. You'll feel any bits of dirt, dust, anything like that. So ideally, to take this kind of measurement, we would want a hole in the surface plate and through that would be inserted an indicator, so from underneath. Then you get the full contact on the face of the part to your plate, and the indicator will pick up any variance from flat. Now I don't have that kind of apparatus, unfortunately. I'm not drilling a hole in the plate for the sake of this video. But maybe you might buy a plate one day and do that. And buy one that's already made up. Anyway, we can approximate this with a couple of parallels. These are fairly tall, fairly chunky parallels, which are ideal for this sort of thing because they don't move, they're very solid. Again, wipe everything off, make sure everything's clean. And essentially our surface plate is still our datum. This is still our reference point, but we moved it up a little bit. Now you probably want to check this, if this is a critical measurement, you probably want to check that your parallels are indeed parallel and that they are the same height. And once you know, or once you're confident that these are the ones to use, that they're, they're sufficient for, uh, sufficiently parallel. Take the face that you want to evaluate and put it face down on your two parallels. Now I have an indicator mounted in the stand. You can see it's mounted really quite low down. We're going to sweep the bottom of the part here, or the, well, the part that's in contact with the parallels. We get our probe under there. I'm going to call that, that five tenths, that's our zero and you can sweep the part until you're satisfied with your high and low points or until you're satisfied that you've got the uh, correct measurements. And that's probably within, within a tenth or so, just over a tenth, which is probably good enough for our purposes. So checking for parallelism is essentially the opposite of what we've just done. We take the face we checked, make sure it's clean, make sure the plate's clean. We place that face down onto the surface plate and that face now becomes our datum, that's our reference point. We bring our indicator in and again all we do is like we did uh, with checking the flatness we use our indicator to sweep the face and take our high and low measurements and if they're within tolerance, great. If they're not, well, we can correct for that. It looks like we're probably within a tenth there. It looks like from here anyway. And that's more than good enough for what we're after. 
We now know that we have two flat and parallel faces within the tolerances that we require, but we still need to check them for perpendicularity to the bottom face. And that will become our new datum. On page 23 of the British Standards document I showed you earlier, there is a recommendation for testing squareness. And essentially it's an angle plate with a bar across the bottom and an indicator at the top. This is moved up to the square that you're testing, the measurement is taken, it's moved around to the other side of the square, another measurement's taken, and the difference between the two is your error. Now, I don't have an angle plate to modify for this, but what I do have is a dial gauge indicator stand, and I've set this up to mimic what you've just seen. We have a contact point at the bottom and an indicator at the top. And according to LS star, it, this is supposed to be at the top of our uh, rod. We flip that round, put it back in the clamp, and that serves as our contact point. And these two always take the measurements in the same plane, you don't change that, and those two planes are always parallel to the surface plate or the datum. Now that's why this works. So if this is leaning towards the indicator, obviously we'll get a higher measurement, and if it's leaning away, we'll get a lower measurement. So how do we use the contraption that we've made? Well, the first thing to do is to nestle up against that contact point, right up against the block, and then we can pivot around that until the dial indicator engages with the block. And you can see that needle is starting to rise, and that will come up to, looks like we're plus one, is our high point, and it will start to come back down. And then we need to do the same for the other side. So we turn our block around, you have to be careful with this, you're picking up dust or anything underneath. It'll ruin your measurements. Ask me how I know. <laughs> how many takes this has taken. So again, contact point on the block. Pivot around. And our high point looks to be zero, actually. Which is uh, it's pretty good. So we're within tolerance. Within tolerance is what I want to be in. And it really is that simple. There is one more thing to look out for, and that's that you want to take a series of measurements across each of these faces, and that will tell you whether you've got a compound lean. You've got one corner up, one corner down, and if you know it's there, you can correct for it. Otherwise, we're pretty much done. We've checked for flatness, parallelism, and perpendicularity all in one neat little project. I know that this isn't a proper standards compliant block square. However, one day we'll get to making one of those. I'll get a surface grinder and we'll do it all properly. But for now, this will do for the review that I'm filming. And to be fair, this is perpendicular within, or square within, three microns. I can tell you the part that I need to check against this isn't square against, um, isn't square against this, and this isn't square within three microns. So uh, it's more of a nail in the coffin than it is a, a legitimate test, but this will be a handy thing to have around anyway. So if you come from Instagram and you saw the short video that I did, you know, this has been a bit more elaborate. I hope it's been a bit more, uh, bit more interesting for you. Uh, otherwise, thank you for watching, and I hope this has been useful in some respect or helpful for you. And um, and I'll see you in the next video. It's, it's getting a bit, getting a bit delirious now. It's about two in the morning. Uh, I've reshot this so many times, and uh, and this is the last one. That's it. We're done.